if gold is gold, there's no reason not to stack constitutional gold. No, no good reason at all. We are here with Tim again. Tim, you made it in. Yes, it was a, kind of a long drive down to Boston and back. Um, it's kind of typical for New Hampshire, but um, this one went all the way down the highway. Yeah, this was really bad. Freezing rain, uh, 60 plus accidents, had shut down sections of several highways. It was a skating rink out there. I'm glad you're yeah, okay. Yeah, really, was, it was something else. I, mean, I, I, I had planned to drive the, the Fusion today, and I, I started to thaw that out. But when I slipped on the gravel on my gravel driveway, I said, maybe I'll take the four-wheel drive truck. Smart. So, but yeah, you still that, have to drive carefully on ice. It oh, doesn't it, matter yeah, if you have four-wheel drive. Uh, the, some people were just, you know, blasting by me. But, um, you yeah, know, they were – I did see one person uh, – Go off the road and hit a sign, and the sign collapsed on top of the car. So, um, you had asked me about uh, constitutional uh, gold. Yes, pre-33 yeah. constitutional gold. Yes. Customers have been asking me for everything. You know, buffaloes, American Eagles, uh, Maple Leafs. So I have a pretty good selection that's probably going to go out the door today. To today. And it doesn't never last very long. I got you two 20s and two 10s. And... Um, can, can you tell the viewers, what is pre-33 or constitutional gold anyway? Well, um, back when the Constitution was written, uh, they, they kind of made a, a pact with the rest of the world that they only would produce gold and silver in coins. Um, and that the, the money would be based on that. Um, that didn't last very long because there's not enough gold in the world to back the U.S. dollar, and that was determined way back in the 1930s. Mm -hmm. um, so what Roosevelt did, uh, everybody says they confiscated gold. That really wasn't the intent, but that's what it sounded like to most people. Um, what they did was they separated gold from the currency, and the way they did that was to um, pretty much tell the country that gold is no longer valid currency. And uh, <laughs> they needed to somehow convert to those uh, worthless Federal Reserve notes. And um, in fact, at one time in the 1928 series, the Federal Reserve notes said redeemable in gold at the United States Treasury. Uh, nothing could be farther from the truth, but it did convince a lot of people to start using those greenbacks, you know, instead of the gold backs. So you really couldn't go into a bank and exchange one of those for? No, you could not. No, no. And, and you don't have access to the United States Treasury. Well, of course not. How um, about silver, like silver certificates? Could you exchange those for silver? You could. You could, I used right? I that yeah. when I was a kid. Yeah. Right, right. They also raised the peg. It was, um, it was $20 an ounce for gold. Mm -hmm. And the $20 gold piece was just a little bit less than an ounce of gold. Um, but after 1933, they pegged it at $35 an ounce. The exemption... Um, of coins that did not have to be turned in uh, were anything that was collectible. And the definition of a collectible coin was a gold coin that is actually worth more than its face value. Okay. When you peg it at $35 an ounce, that made every gold coin worth more than its face value. So the people who, you know, grudgingly turned in their gold before the peg um, made a big mistake. They could always say, well, now it's collectible. New York bankers knew that this was more or less voluntary. And they had a, another recall in 1934 of the uh, national currency, paper money, that was issued by the bank, you know, for each bank, uh, you know, by their charter number. Um, a lot of that paper currency was never turned in. Um, a lot of banks, you know, they had a lot outstanding um, but banks are, they're really, um, not scared to turn in currency, but without getting anything in exchange, how do you run your bank if you, if they take away your currency? So the only gold that was turned in was more or less, you know, junky stuff, you know, mm -hmm. gold with gouges in it or holes in it, or, you know, they've been cleaned up or whatever. And, uh, the rest of it was put in the vaults and most of the New York banks, a lot of it was put on a ship for Switzerland. 
<laughs> I mean, nobody ever said New York bankers were stupid. Let me put it that way. I mean, they can be annoying, but they're not stupid. We have a lot of very, very good collectible gold coins now uh, because they were you know, so they were had enough foresight to put them away. Was gold actually illegal though for several decades until the seventies? Illegal is not the right word okay. because you know an executive order is not law. If Congress point. Congress passed laws to make it illegal, then it would be illegal. Mm -hmm. um, I don't think they, they didn't really, they didn't go knocking on doors and confiscating gold no. and put it that way. Did they go into um, safety deposit boxes and take gold? I have had one person tell me that uh, his family's gold was taken out of a safety deposit box back in the 30s. So I don't know what they, I think that is probably a practice that went bank to bank. How popular now? is pre-33 gold for stacking? Since there's so much bullion gold out there and there's very little fear of it being confiscated, uh, it's not as popular as it should be. When you say bullion gold, you mean th this stuff, right? Yeah, that's stuff. connected, yeah. Like, about to know. drop on the floor. No, I'm not gonna drop. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm editing that out, buddy. <laughs> no. yeah, these, these are uh, circulated. Okay. Okay. They're, Ooh, okay. they're not perfect. They're actually, they look like AUs to me. So, um, almost uncirculated. Yeah. Right? They're, they're pretty close to being uncirculated, but, um, the, the ones that are higher grades are going to be, you command a higher price. And, uh, the ones that are low grades and most of the circulated ones aren't that way off the spot. The gold is gold. There's no reason not to stack constitutional gold. No, no good reason at all. Um, it's, these things are all, they all net to one ounce of gold. Mm -hmm. These do not. Okay. Uh, two tens is 96.75% of a troy ounce in gold. Each 20 is 96.75% of a troy ounce, um, per coin. And these are all, these are all net to one ounce. And these are 24 karat, those are 24 karat, these are 900 gold. Right. Um, you think about constitutional silver, that also is 90% silver. It's it is not 90%. So they, they need something because silver is relatively soft in its pure state. Gold is very soft in its pure state. Right. So they, they mix, usually copper is the best stiffener. It stiffens the surface so it doesn't scratch as easily. The American Eagle, they use silver. Silver and copper are very similar in, in their ability to protect the surface of the coin. Mm -hmm. Almost all circulated gold coins, doesn't matter if it's 20 francs or 20 marks, um, sovereigns are 900, 900 gold, 90% gold, because um, they're all meant to circulate. So all the circulating gold that was made back in the early 1900s uh, is usually 90%. And that's just to keep it from deteriorating right. rapidly in, in circulation. You said this was the 10? Um, I don't know, what's it say on that? I didn't even look at <laughs> uh, it. It says five. Oh, no. no, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. Uh, With my eyes, I have to use my, my 10, two. yeah. Yeah, it is a 20. It's a 10 and that's a 20. So yeah, is that nice. like, uh, that's just shy of an ounce? It's what, just shy of a half ounce? Yes. Okay, good. Hmm. And the quarters are just shy of a quarter of an ounce. I mean, the fives are just shy of a quarter of an ounce. And the, you know, if you want to do the math, it's 0. 0.2418 for the quarter. Uh, twice that for the 10. And uh, for the half, it's five and five and 10. And um, twice that for the 20. That's the way it works out. You're mocking me, aren't you? <laughs> Go ahead. I'm just trying to make it clear for me. You know, I, deal with, I deal with these numbers every day, know, all day okay. long. And um, there's no logic to anything. So especially no, if I, it comes from the U.S. Mint, there's no logic to anything. Um, and even in the beginning, when they established the ratio of, of between gold and silver at 16, it actually, by statute, it was actually 15 to 1. Yep. Um they had um, some very important people, smart people in our government. Our founders mm -hmm. were very smart people 
um, suggesting that that ratio was a little off and that it really should be 25 to 1. Mm -hmm. And um, so they made the coins 16 to 1. Okay, and They didn't want to listen to anybody who had, who had more brains. <laughs> the same way they operate today. <laughs> so the... Um, uh, I guess it was around the 19, in the early 1930s. They they reduced the size of the half dollars. They reduced the size of the dollar, and um, they now are 25 to one, the way they should have been. That was established in commerce by by the Spaniards, basically, because they their reason for going to the New World was for gold and silver. <laughs> so, yep. Um, so if you did business with Spain. It was at 25 to 1. And they just said, you know, this should be worth about 1 25th of that. And it was accepted around the world because they were the ones who, they had it. So they established the ratio. <laughs> and there were coin collectors in this country, notably people like Thomas Jefferson, who was pretty much right about everything he did. Um, and you know, they, they just, when they established the mint, they just didn't listen to anybody. Well, I'm going to definitely pick up some of these um, because it's it just, if I'm going to be collecting, I should say stacking constitutional silver, I can't for the life of me re rationalize why I shouldn't yeah, be stacking those. constitutional gold. Those are really nice. Are these? They're gorgeous. Yeah. So people would literally carry that around in a purse or a pocket or something, the, right? The, the coin that was most frequently carried by people was the five. The five was really the basis for the, the gold currency. Mm -hmm. um, you had to be fairly wealthy back in the 1800s yeah. to have, you know, a $20 gold piece. Or 1894. So if back in 1894, if I had this... I'd probably buy a car. No. <laughs> It, but it, a no, wealthier person no, would have no, that in their pocket, right? Okay. Yeah, we'd only take a handful of those to buy a Model T or a Model A. How does how does this compare to say a bullion gold coin uh, in terms of uh, resellability? To, uh, to me, it's the same, okay. and um, I do look at the gray sheet to see what by that date you know what the rarity is. Uh, but if, if you have a really good twenty dollar gold piece, uh, you're likely to have it certified. You know, if, if it's if it's up to mint, mint state 64, there's not a lot of uh, gain if you have it certified. Interesting. Uh, after 64, when you have when you have a genuine 65, it's a big leap from the others. Okay. Um, you can buy 61s and 62s for the same price as something that's in a flip. Okay, so yeah. that's that's but a good. You know, 63, there may be a little more. Know. 64, they're going to be a little bit more. Oh, man. So these are um, Liberty Head, right? Yeah, the Liberty Head. Versus, say, the Indian Head, right? Indian started in the uh, 1907, I think it was, and the uh, St. Gaudens 20, yeah. Which is better to stack, in your opinion? An Indian Head, gold, same weight, uh, same, okay. no key date, uh, or a Liberty Head? St. Gaudens <laughs> and all the Liberty, all the um, Indian coins, Indian 10, Indian 5, and, and 2.5. And uh, command a higher price because of their collectability. So if you're stacking, mm. stack the liberties. They're less money. Makes Same sense. amount of gold. Makes sense. Makes a lot of sense. Um, I, I I love it because to me this is almost like a built-in um, built-in hallmark, if you will, that this is legitimate. Not that it can't be counterfeited, but when yeah, you look at this. Huh? It definitely is. I mean, that's um, that's why I like them is because they were in circulation. Which would be more apt to be counterfeited? I think the Indians were probably more counterfeited than anything else. Okay. Uh, even two and a half, you know, and five dollar Indians were were counterfeited. But would somebody w counterfeit something that was worn more worn than? No, no. Okay. They, they would. They probably try to get the best representation because then if it gets worn in circulation, it wears just like any other coin. See, that's that's another thing. That's one of the reasons why I like junk silver so much. I said junk silver. Yes, I'm sorry. Constitutional silver that's been slightly worn. You can tell this has been in circulation and the odds of that being 
counterfeited, I think, is very low. Well, we see counterfeit uh, Morgans all the time. But those and are Morgans. not as many peace dollars. The, the famous okay. one was my, my daughter bought one, and she called me. This is years ago. She said, Dad, I can't find 1929 peace dollars anywhere. Did they make any? And I said, no, they didn't make any in 1929. She goes, damn. But how about an 1890 Liberty Head gold coin that's not you know, certified or, or slabbed? What are the odds of that being counterfeited? Well, that's, the, the odds aren't that great. I had one fellow who brought me um, a $10 Indian that looked really good that he inherited from his father. And um, I said, what do you know about it? He said, well, not much. I'm just curious to make sure that it's genuine. And it looked really nice. And it's kind of odd that you don't see them with any marks on them. Because they, in, back in the U.S. Mint, they would take coal shovels and shovel them into ba the machines and put them in bags. So I asked a fellow named David Carr. Very, he was an expert in gold. He passed away a few years ago. But he, he looked, took one look at it and said, it's counterfeit. And I said, really? He said, uh, he said well, this is one of the ones that was counterfeited by the Nazis in the Second World War. I said, that's very interesting. You sure about that? He said, I'd stake my reputation on it. Wow. And he didn't even look at it. He just, yep, that's a counterfeit. That's amazing. So and so when this fella, fella came in, uh, I said, well, un unfortunately, the expert says it's a counterfeit. And that's why it's, it's so nice. <laughs> and he said, that's interesting. What else did he tell you about it? He said he was he was said he, he uh, it was uh, made by the Nazis in the Second World War, and he said that's interesting because my father bought it in Brussels right after the war. There you go. So amazing. But so, you know, other than the Nazis counterfeiting things, because they did a lot of that, um, it's it's rare to see these things counterfeited. So so if this has Not a lot of back, thank God there are a lot of counterfeits. St. Gaudens. Yes, and this was a $10 Indian. Okay. So, um, so Indian St. Gaudens, higher likelihood of, of very, counterfeiting. Very high likelihood. And, and if I see bag marks and nicks and stuff on there, does that also give me a better feeling? Not that I shouldn't test my Well, it goals. means it was in circulation. If it's in circulation, that's usually a good sign. Good sign. Um, yeah. But you still want to put them on a bear Absolutely. Box. Or a pocket pinger yeah, that I have. I've gotten lazy enough in my old age to put everything on a verifier. I could touch these with my bare hands, right? Without worrying. Oh, you, you could, if you buy them. You know what I mean though, right? Like constitutional silver, right? I don't even think twice about, I mean, I handle them. Yeah, no, if they've been circulated, I don't even handle them on the edges. Yeah. Should, what would you say with these? Just handle them on the edges and you're good? Forget yeah, gloves? Well, you don't want them to deteriorate. They're, they're a relic from the past, you know, treat them with respect. Mm -hmm. and, yes, sir. Um, is it going to hurt them if you handle them? Probably not. Got it. Like if, you, it. if you leave your nasty fingerprints off, you may have to dip it at some point. Oh, okay. No, that, that's the, it's not going to affect the gold. Okay. I, it doesn't tarnish, right? It doesn't tarnish. All right. There is someone here that's been patient. Um, I'll, I'll bring it around so I won't show your face. Kevin? That's okay. How yeah. are you, Kevin? I'm doing well. Kevin doing from well. Massachusetts drove up here. He, he contacted me through my channel and asked me if I was interested in buying a gorgeous piece of gold certified pcgs yes and i i said no you said no i said no but you were tempted i was very tempted you know? <laughs> did you bring it i did yep i got in my little kangaroo pouch here um, this is gonna be really hard tim so this is the pc you know it's graded pcgs here oh look at that and uh, uh ms ms62 that's beauty Yep, right 19, there. 1904. 1904. Okay. And the reverse, of course. Oh, a little it's higher here. there. I got it. Oh, man. That was very nice of you to offer that to me. Yeah, of course. I, I mean, I really like the, the older ones because it, that circulated look, you really can't buy that today. It's, it's becoming rarer and rarer, just like constitutional, of course. Mm -hmm. And it's part of our lineage as Americans. So... For me, this is a very special piece in, in my collection because mm. uh, it just, it, you really can't, people don't spend gold anymore. So it's not something that is common. And I, it's got that cool factor for me that, that really uh, makes it worthwhile to, to own. 
Yeah, as a collect, it, my, my collector juices are really surging right now. And uh, I have to, oh man, it's hard because I'm trying to be a disciplined stacker and I'm trying to get things more in its raw form because I really am focused more on the, the, the value based upon its gold or silver content, not sure. in any other fashion. Not that I never collect anything, but that's why I said no, not because I didn't think you offered a good deal and nor did I think it was a, a generous thing for you to do. It's just, I was trying to, trying to hold back. <laughs> I, I understand. I totally uh, understand. Everyone has you. their own style and that needs right. to be respected. Yes. And you know, your way and is everyone has different ways. Right. right. So, uh, I mean, for me, I would probably, if, if someone just has one of those, I think it's a very cool thing. It doesn't yes. have to be their whole stack. True. Uh, it can just be one special piece that they tuck away and right. take out every once in a while and kind of yep. uh, appreciate. And uh, I think that's I think that's a cool thing. So you think so. of that? These are the ten dollar piece. Yeah, those are the ten dollars. I I love the eagle in the yeah, back on the ten dollar right. piece here. Yeah, I think that's a very cool, very uh, very Civil War era kind of eagle. Mm -hmm. I think um, the tens are great. The tens are just as good as I, I like the twenty dollar ones personally because it's just it's got a nice ring to it. I, I imagine some guy in a saloon would would take it and just you know, and he would just he would slap it on the counter, and and the guy would give him a whiskey or a bottle of whiskey. And this mm. this was actually here. People, you know, our forefathers used these as you know to to buy Currency, things. With. Yeah, that so was real money. This is, is actually this is this this is actually something that was. From that era, right? And you know it's that just so adds cool. to the coolness uh, right. factor of that. So I don't mind the scratches on or anything. No, I I, I actually cool. I like the scratches. I think both from a, a circulation verification, a trust factor. I like it. I, in fact, I wouldn't even have minded it, Tim, if these were not so beautiful. But I don't mind that they're beautiful. Don't get me wrong. They're beautiful. They're beautiful in their own in their own way. I think uh, I think I'm gonna buy some of these, Tim. Uh, I don't know how much. I have to spend. I might get like maybe two of these and one of those. I've, I've been I've been sacking for twenty years, and I got my first gold coin when I was eight years old. I was probably the youngest person ever in the shop when I, when I show up at the oh shop. My, your money? Yeah. My money. My grandmother gave us an inheritance for each of our uh, each of the grandchildren. Wow! So I took that money and I put it into gold. And at that time, gold was at. Six hundred, five hundred dollars an ounce or so. Oh. So, five, five, you know, I got about four or five gold coins from my grandmother's. You know, it was like a bond that we cashed out. So you were a stacker yeah. at eight. Yeah. So I've had phases. I've gone in and out of like what I've been, been interested in and yeah. things, but uh, but it's been a great journey, and I've always been attracted to gold because it's just kind of. Uh -huh. I think we're kind of built to love gold. You know, it comes from the stars. Sure, too, because you know, the majority of the gold that's mined in the world comes from asteroids. That's right. Because you know, the gold veins are very hard to find. They're usually from old ancient volcanoes. And you know, we, you know, with a subset of an explosion took place that pushed that heavy metal up through the uh, cooling crust. It, you know, it's the, the weight of the gold means that you know, the core of the earth has got to have lots and lots of gold just because of the weight. And um, among other things, but uh, to find a gold vein means you know, it was quite an explosion in, in an ancient volcano. Uh, most of it comes from asteroids. I get a few comments occasionally from viewers that say, Yankee, what's going to happen in 10 years or 20 years when they land on an asteroid or a comet or whatever, and they start mining gold and it's just so full of gold. Won't that just drive the price of gold down to next to nothing. It'll be so calm and Yankee. Right, if you watch Don't Look Up on Netflix, there's a, there's a part of the movie where they're trying oh, to yes. mine the asteroid. It's a, it's a segment to climate change, but it's the same kind of, I, I watched that the other day, Don't Look Up. Right, right. Trying to mine the asteroid. But do you think, <laughs> is that a big, is that a risk? Or well, is it kind of far-fetched? An asteroid would be big enough to land on and mine would mean that its core is probably where the gold is. And, um, it's dense. It could be in the it, depending on where the asteroid came from, and if it, it's like everything else that's floating around out there, if it came from a star, mm -hmm. um, 
you know, it, it probably has a core of gold. So if you're landing on this and you've, you've brought a lot of heavy equipment with you, it's probably a, a long way down. Is it financially feasible? Does it make sense from a cost uh, standpoint? If our technology was good enough, we could, and that we could fe feasibly do it with relative ease, then yes, but we're not there yet. Let me call Elon Musk and ask him that question. Yeah, Elon Musk will be the one to take that probably say, up. Yeah. Nothing's not financially feasible. That's a really good point. So some on, you know, some venture capitalists would probably just throw fiat at some company that said they were going to go up and, and mine all the gold and other rare earth metals off of, earth metals, rare metals off of uh, an asteroid and not turn a profit for, oh, I don't know, a hundred years. Well, if I had an opportunity to go to space with um, uh, Branson or Bezos or Musk, I would definitely go with Musk. Mm -hmm. He's the cooler one of the three. Oh, I agree. Definitely, <laughs> definitely, he's the smartest <laughs> of the three. Yeah, yep. I agree. So no real threat, do you think, with uh, mining gold from asteroids anytime soon? No, because the population of the Earth is growing and, um, you know, pretty much out of control. And uh, there will be more and more use for, mm -hmm. for gold. So yeah. it'll all even out. Um, and I don't have enough money yet to buy this, but you do have in here Canadian maples. Are these spoken for yet? Not all of them. Not all of them. Oh, man. Oh, man. I need to get a tube. But I don't. I, I, I bought gold today, so I think I'm happy. Check out the description uh, of this video for Tim's information. All right, thanks, Tim.